brethren. Welcome to part two of the working tools presentation that I've taken from Solomon. This part particularly looks at speculative Freemasonry and how working tools are applied to us. The appropriation of the operatives tools into speculative masonry. Evidence of the use of working tools in speculative Freemasonry post 1717 can be found in the various exposures. An exposure was a pamphlet or paper that purported to describe in detail the proceedings of a secret Masonic assembly. Some were written by Masons, many were not, but despite their differences a common thread could often be detected. These exposures revealed that tools of the trade gradually became used in four stages. Firstly, there was occasional use of a mason's working tools in general discussion without any explanation or symbolism. Next came the mention of a tool in a catechism without symbolism. Later, the catechisms of a apprentice included an explanation of certain tools without symbolism. Lastly, approaching the time of unification, the catechisms for the entered apprentice ceremonies only began to offer both an explanation of the tools used on site, together with their symbolic use affirming related moral values. During the late 17th and 18th centuries, mention was made in the Edinburgh Register House manuscripts of 1696, 1700 and 1714 of an oath used by Freemasons which included, As I am sworn by God, by St John, by the square and compass and common judge. A judge was a gauge or template. No symbolism was implied. The various exposures of Freemasonry from this time on began to include the names of various Masonic tools, but other than purporting to demonstrate an operative link with Freemasonry, no attempt was made to moralise them. One pamphlet of 1724 published a Mason's Catechism which included the phrase, the square, the compasses, the judge, the ashlar and the diamond. The ashlar was probably in use to sharpen tools. The diamond was a hammer for breaching hewn stone. In answer to a later question about the number of lights in a lodge, the reply was 12. Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Sun, moon, master mason, square, rule, plumb line, maul and chisel. There was no mention of a compass. By 1730, Pritchard's masonry dissected, mention is made of a candidate kneeling. Within the square, the compass extended to my naked left breast. There is reference to the movable jewels of square, level, plumb rule, as being emblems of master and wardens. Pritchard's text also begins to include some explanations. Square to lay down true and right lines. Level to try all horizontals and the plumb rule to try all uprights. A comparably dated Wilkinson manuscript mentions the square to see thy corner stones are laid square the level that they are laid level and ye plumb to raise perpendiculars. An exposure of 1744 refers to the following key tools of a mason. Square, compasses, level, plumb, rule, trowel and mason's hammer. There is no mention of a gavel and this is the earliest known reference to compass in the plural. By 1760, in the three distinct knocks, we at last see the first mention of any tools being moralised. The Bible to rule and govern our faith. The square to square our actions. The compasses to keep us within bounds with all men, particularly with a brother. An explanation is now given for the square, the common gavel and the 24 inch gauge. For example, the 24-inch gauge represents the 24 hours of the day. 
Six hours to work in, six hours to serve my God, and six to serve a friend or brother, as far as lies within my power without detriment to myself or family, and six hours to sleep in. By 1801, Preston, describing an installation ceremony, lists the following tools. The rule, the line, the trowel, the chisel, the plumb, the level, the square, the compasses, the mallet. In that order, with each related to a moral quality. As afterthoughts, by the late 18th century, the form of the working tools ritual that we know so well was gradually stabilising. It only remained for the Committee of Reconciliation, circa 1813, to select the most promising material of the ancients and moderns and select nine working tools to embrace both meaning and morality, not just for the first, but for all three degrees. The fruits of their labours, still substantially unchanged, can be seen in the Book of Emulation ritual that is on our shelves today, and I'm sure we're all very familiar with that particular book. I hope you found this interesting, brethren, and thank you very much indeed for your very kind attention.